Before we get started with today's class, I want us to recognize a few things. I want us to acknowledge that however this process of loss happened for you, whether you gave birth, whether you miscarried, whether you had a surgical procedure, all of that is traumatic. All of that is a loss. And I think it's really important to acknowledge how hard that was to go through. I want us to also acknowledge that whether you were six weeks or 36 weeks, you are now postpartum. And what that means is you're going to be faced with all of the challenges that a regular postpartum woman would face. The hormone fluctuations, mood swings, relaxing in the body, making you feel less stable, and most likely exhaustion as well. And then finally, I also want us to acknowledge that this experience often brings up a lot of negative feelings towards our own body for all the ways that we might feel that it has failed us. We might feel anger, resentment, disappointment, all of those feelings are valid, all of those feelings are okay. And in today's practice, we're just gonna acknowledge that those feelings are there, maybe try and hold them a little less tightly and start to welcome in a little bit of forgiveness as well. So let's start on our mat today, just in a comfortable seat. So if that isn't cross-legged for you, take the legs out, sit up on a bolster, sitting in any way that feels okay for you today. And I want you to invite a little bit more length in the spine. So see if you can lift the crown of the head up, rest the palms in the lap, and we're gonna close the eyes down to start. We're simply gonna start with the breath, breathing in, and breathing out. Breathing in, and breathing out. And what is a super simple practice may feel excruciating for you at this time. This stillness, this intense focus of being in your body may be a lot to deal with when you're grieving. So just acknowledge all of that and just be here breathing with whatever feelings come up for you today. Good, I want you to flutter open the eyes gently and bring both hands to the heart and just shift the breath into this space. So see if you can breathe fully into the upper chest as well, and then gently soften. Connecting with this space in your body that is likely still aching with every breath. Just acknowledging this space, holding this space tenderly for yourself. Good, release the hands. Gently bring one ear over to the same shoulder. Getting a nice stretch down the left side of the neck. Keeping our practice super simple today. Yoga doesn't have to be fancy postures or big movements. It can be super simple and still bring relief, still bring a little bit of peace to the body. Good. Shift the chin down towards the chest, getting a beautiful stretch up the back of the neck. Still keeping the spine nice and long as you tuck the chin. See if you can keep breathing fully and deeply in and out the nose. And then shift the head, bringing the opposite ear down to the same shoulder. Really focusing on breathing up this length of the neck. Good, and then release the head back to center. Inhale the shoulders up towards the ears and then see if you can shift the shoulders back behind the body and then down the back. Good, roll the shoulders forwards. Inhale them up towards the ears. 
exhale them back and down slide them down the back and then bring them forward inhale lift them up exhale slide them back and around to the front inhale up exhale down and around good let's just settle in here for a moment interlace the fingers and then press the hands forward, rounding through that upper back. And then as you inhale, let's take cactus arms. So elbows back, fingertips towards the sky. And then exhale, interlace the fingers, press them forward again, round through that upper back. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Coming back to center and finding that nice long spine again. Let's bring some movement into the body, starting to take some pelvic circles. Just moving the upper body around. It should feel good in the body. So if it doesn't, maybe make your circles a little bit smaller. I like to really press my chest forward as I come forward and then find that rounding through the back as I shift back. Inhale forwards. And then exhale back. Good, let's reverse our circles, coming around. If this is the first movement that you're doing after loss, I just want you to acknowledge that this mightn't feel pleasant. Coming back into the body after a traumatic loss like you've experienced is really hard. And I think we can sometimes downplay how hard that experience is of just coming back into a physical practice or a stillness practice. I remember there were many moments after each of my losses where I just broke down in tears and often it was when a part of my body that I'd kind of been quite disconnected from had been reconnected to. So if that's happening for you today, if tears are flowing, if you're feeling angry, if whatever's coming up, just let it be. All of that is okay. Good, let's release. Bring the soles of the feet together now. This can be quite intense on the inner thigh. So if it is, you can support with the hands. You could bring bolsters or cushions underneath the knees. You could take the feet a little further away from the body just to make a bit more space for the hips. And then I just want you to sit. Finding stillness here, maybe closing down the eyes if that feels nice. Keep that length through the spine. Maybe you rock from side to side. Stillness is great too though, if rocking doesn't feel good for you today. Coming back to center if you're rocking and then just lifting the knees up on the inhale and then exhale, letting them get heavy. Inhale, lifting them up and exhale, letting them get heavy. One more time. Inhale, lifting them up. Exhale, let them get heavy. Good. I'm going to come over onto our hands and knees now. So take your time getting there. And once you're there, set the hands underneath the shoulders and the knees under the hips and just rock. Side to side, rocking can be really soothing. Feel free to come to this whenever you need. And then you might take some circles, so moving into the wrists a little bit more. You might even like to move the wrists in different directions, bringing a bit of a stretch back into these spaces. And then simply take a seat back towards the heels Take the knees nice and wide so there's no compression on the belly. 
Stretch the arms forward and either come to rest the forehead on the mat or you could bring one hand underneath the head just for support. So choose what works for you. And then I want you to get completely rested here. So every part of your body is sinking into the points of contact with the mat. Softening through the face, the neck, the shoulders, even the hands, no longer needing to grip here. Bring the palms together and bring them behind the head, getting a beautiful stretch with the back side of the upper arms or the triceps. And so in a position here of prayer, perhaps you'd like to take a moment just to send a prayer out into the universe, something that you're hoping, whether it's bringing a little bit of peace into your own heart Maybe it's inviting that forgiveness in. I forgive my body. Maybe it's a little prayer about making each day a little easier. Let every day be a little more filled with ease. Whatever your prayer is, say it softly and quietly to yourself. Release the hands. Coming back up to your tabletop. So hands underneath the shoulders again. Knees under the hips. Do a few rounds of our cat cow, bringing some movement into the spine. So in your own time, inhale as you lift the tail, lift the head. And then exhale as you gently round, looking back towards the thighs. Inhale, so feel free to move your spine as much as feels good for you. And then exhale, press away. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, last one. Exhale. Good. Coming back to your tabletop. We're going to come all the way down now onto our belly. So support the body. Slowly coming down. And I want you to bring the hands underneath the head so that you can rest here and just rock the hips from side to side. Good. And then let's just take the right hand out. We're moving into a twist here. The left hand comes by the left shoulder. I just want you to gently roll towards that right arm. So getting a stretch through the right shoulder. You may be able to place this back foot behind like I've got, or maybe it's more comfortable just to stay really supported and forward. Make sure you listen to your body, what feels good for you. Keep breathing deeply here. Good, and then gently roll back onto the belly, really taking our time. Hands come back underneath the head and give the hips a little rock from side to side. And then take the left hand out, right hand by the right shoulder, and then gently roll towards that left arm. Remembering to rest the head down. We don't want to keep the head and neck hanging. It's not very comfortable or restorative. So we're stretching into those shoulders. Often the space in our body becomes very tight when we're grieving as we round in on ourselves in a pose of protection. So just gently helping to open out through those shoulders. Breathing here. And then slowly rolling back onto the belly, 
I want you to bring the hands so that the elbows this time are underneath the shoulders. And then I want you to roll the legs so that the fleshy bits of the legs are in towards the center. So you should be able to sort of feel the thighs rolling under, if you will. This helps to create a nice feeling for the low back, pressing the pubic bone into the floor. And I just want you to lift the heart gently in our Sphinx pose. Really nice and gentle heart opener. Also quite a gentle back bend. But if this doesn't feel good, if anything doesn't feel good in today's class, remember to come and rest and join us when you're ready. Just breathing here. Good, next breath. Let's soften it down. So again, Hands under head, rock those hips from side to side, really softening through that low back. And then I want you to bring the hands by either shoulder and just gently lift the heart. So now we're engaging through the low back. We're not so much doing anything with the hands, they're kind of just there for support, but I'm not pushing into my hands and extending the back bend. I'm keeping it nice and soft here and just starting to open that heart up by using the strength, using our back strength to gently lift. Keep the chin tucked so the back of the neck is long. And breathing into that belly, squeezing those toes in towards each other so the inner thighs are fired up, taking any stress out of that low back. One more breath here. And then on the exhale, I want you to release it all down. Let it all go into the floor. Rock the hip side to side. Good. All right. Let's come back on up into our tabletop. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And just take the left foot out, press into the ball of the foot. Gently stretching out the calves and the back of the leg. Keep the weight nice and even through the hands. Check in with the head and neck. Hopefully we're not holding the neck in any way that's creating tension and just gently press back into that back leg. Good, release the leg down. Take the right leg out behind you again. Gently press into the ball of the foot. While you're here, check into the body. Are we holding any tension that doesn't need to be there? Can we breathe and let it go? Good, gently release the leg back down. I want you to take the knees wide this time. We're coming into a different variation of our child's pose. This time the hands are going to come through the legs and hold on to the feet and then rest the side of the head down. I always love this version of child's pose because it feels like you're gently being hugged by the knees in on the side of the arms. And just breathing here. The hips and low back become heavy. The side of the head sink into the mat. On your next breath, slowly use the arms to bring yourself up. And then all we're going to do is simply flip ourselves over, coming onto the back. So again, as your postpartum, I want you to use the hands to support. We're not asking the core to do anything too intense. We're coming into a few gentle bridges before we settle into our Shavasana today. So bring the feet in towards the hips and then gently press into the feet, rolling the hips up to the sky. And then exhale, rolling down. So just helping to release anything that we're holding in the spine. Connecting with this space in the body, the pelvis, the low back, the womb, the pelvic floor. 
Maybe seeing if we can release our grip on some of the anger that we might be feeling. Seeing if we can allow ourselves to move into a space of accepting what is even when we don't want it to be. And bringing a little bit of forgiveness. Thank you, you did the best you could. We survived, we are safe, and we can still have hope. Gently rolling down. And then I want you to release into however you like to practice your Shavasana. So for some women that's flat on their back. For some, you might like to lie on the front line of the body, on the belly, and really have that gentle pressure on the front line. I like to have something underneath my knees. It helps to reduce any pressure or strain through that low back. You might like to bring the hands onto the belly or lay with the palms facing up. And then there's nothing left to do but to tune in, to listen to the body, to listen to your heart and your soul, and to allow everything that is to be. To know that even when things happen in a way that we don't want them to, there's nothing we can do and in fact, the fighting against and the struggling about why tends to make the struggle worse. But if we can find a way to take a breath, and in spite of the pain, in spite of the grief, in the sadness, in spite of all of that, we can allow ourselves to be and to be okay. And being okay doesn't mean you don't cry. It doesn't mean that you don't feel incredibly sad, but you can still hold on to a peace in here that knows you're going to be okay and that you are okay. I want you to lie here for as long as you're able, just noticing the breath and turning your attention inward. A singing bell will ring when it's time to end our practice. 